So what I've got here is a copy of a seat frame that was essentially either scanned with a laser uh, device or a Perliner, some kind of data capture. You can actually capture the framework of the seat and you can see that the outline has been captured in 3D. And what we've done is I've gone in and cleaned up anywhere that might need to be cleaned up, like maybe where the lines wouldn't connect. Uh, applying a mesh to this is as simple as taking the M-Panel production tool 8.0 I'm going to go to add a mesh between two three or four edges and I've set the density to something like 25 and simply by clicking on the button clicking the bottom the right the top and the left hand edges again bottom right here I'm going to select this curve for the top and the left hand edges automatically will place the uh, the meshes on this framework down here uh, and you can see there I've actually let's swing around um, let's say that's the bottom right top and left hand side of the back and then for the sides here it's it's really as simple as doing the same thing and finally for this very top piece right here look I'll pick the bottom I'll pick the right edge the top edge which is the curve and the left edge and every time if it sees something close to it it's going to give me an option and I'll pick the curve and so what you can see here, and I've still got a couple pieces down here on the bottom, but uh, let's take a look here at a, uh, a rendered mode. And certainly we can see what we've done so far, and there's only two pieces here left. Might as well finish those up. We'll say that's the bottom, that's the right side, that's the top, and the left side. Fills in the mesh. And bottom, right, top, and left hand side okay great so we what we've done is we filled in that mesh and we've we've done those completely so uh, another nice tool here I had a full copy that, but I wanted to show you here that I can actually go to the select tool and I can just say I want to select the meshes and certainly by selecting the whole chair let me select everything make sure I get the whole chair but then run the uh, the selection tool um, it actually selected 10 meshes out of that so I can copy those meshes and just let me copy those forward. So what I've got now is I just have the meshes. I left the wireframe, basically. I did not copy any of these wires that we had, the wire or the wire before. So I just have a copy of the meshes now. Now, one other thing we can do with in-panel production is if I go to this tool here called Adjust Mesh, certainly we have Tension Mesh, which is what we use a lot for awnings or bimini tops, things like that. But I have another option out here called Inflate Mesh. And um, one thing that we can do here, let's go back to a wireframe so we can see this happen, is I can put in an inflation pressure. Let's put in like a 0.25. And I'm going to click on this bottom piece here, and I'm going to run this inflate tool. And what you're going to see is, if you take a look what's happened here, the red one is the old one. I've actually allowed for batting, or I've actually inflated this. Like I just put stuffing in the chair or batting in the chair or foam. I foamed the chair up. And you can actually control the amount of foam you want to put in there and the amount of height. And we're creating the panel for that size. Um, let's go ahead and change this. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. And if I look at both of these, and if I run that tool on both of these, it's running the tool. I'll take a look. And you know what? That's okay, but it's not quite enough. Um, let's go ahead and change that uh, setting to like 0.75. I'm going to select both of those meshes in the front. I'll run the tool again, and certainly now we actually have a, uh, a much nicer uh, foam or batting uh, situation there with those. Uh, let's grab all the four sides of the mesh. Let's grab this edge, this top edge right here, the front. I'll swing around, grab the other two sides, and let's put a little more in there. Let's put something like an inflation of two. And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm really just looking for shape and I'll hit delete old object. And if I look at this now in a rendered mode, you really get a, a good understanding of, of what we're doing here because we started off with something that was very flat, just the flat meshes. And here I can kind of sculpt and, and make the chair or make the, uh, the upholstery, whatever we need it to be. Okay. Let's make another copy of this. Let's go forward just so we can kind of watch our steps. Now, I could start creating 3D panels or 2D panels from this 3D object. But one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm looking straight down on this. 
when I look straight down on this from a top view, you can see that um, I certainly I can see this mesh really well. I can see this mesh really well. I can see this mesh well. What I can't see is are these outside meshes here. I can see the the amount of of full moon that I put in there. But we have a tool in Mpanel now called Arrange Meshes. I'm going to click the chair. I'm going to click Arrange Meshes. And what Mpanel does is it actually turns this. And I'm just going to turn like this. It actually takes every single mesh and flips it so that from the outside, from the backside, I can actually see. And I'll hit Delete Old Objects. So I can see the entire face of that mesh from a top view and if I reset this to top there we go and so you can see how what Mpanel has done is it's arranged these meshes so that from a top view I completely see each of the faces the best now creating flat patterns from these it's simple and this actually is pretty cool to watch from a 3d view let's let's take a look at our 3d view all right and we'll go to wireframe I'll select all of the components of this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select panel of mesh. I'm going to say I want one panel from each mesh. I click the button one time. All these 3D shapes are flattened into flat 2D panels. Um, simple as that. Hit delete old objects. So here we have a full set of the patterns. Now, one thing we need is we need some seam allowance on here. Certainly if we're going to seam these together, these are the full size, but there's no seam allowance. Let's grab each one of these here and I'm going to go to our seam allowance tool I'm going to click on it one time that gets it up here I'm going to say on all of these I want a half inch on all four sides and I want three alignment marks on each side and a normal seam I've clicked all those I've clicked the seam allowance tool and instantly a half inch of seam allowance is applied if I put a dimension on this You'll see that that's exactly one half an inch, and I have alignment marks. You'll see that I have three alignment marks, one in the corner, one in the middle, and here. I can place whatever number I want in here, and it will generate that number of marks on here. I also have the ability to put custom marks wherever I want. Maybe if there's a snap or a certain uh, zipper or something that goes in here, I can absolutely do that. Now for these other ones... Let's say we want a half inch everywhere they're going to attach to this, but on that bottom edge, I need to wrap under the seat. Let's say that needs to be a two inch seam. And let's say we don't need alignment marks on that. So I'm going to click each one of these. I'm going to run the seam allowance tool. And what you'll see is that here I've added a two full two inches. If I go to my dimension, say align from here to here, I've got a full two inches here and a, just a half inch here. So I have the ability in an in panel to put different seam allowances on every single edge of my panel. Hit delete old objects, delete old objects. It leaves the old object as red so we can see what we've done. Certainly I can come in here now if I wanted to number each panel. I could place a number on them with a tag or I could place a number inside. For this example right here, what I'm gonna do is, let's say this, I've got a piece of fabric here. And if I dimension this, let me put a linear dimension on it and see that from here to here I'm I've got 60 inches of fabric so a 60 inch piece of fabric I'm going to use our nesting tool and this is an optional nesting tool that you can use to select your panels select the fabric choose to nest the panels into a drawn polygon here I've said I want the spacing to be one inch apart and I'm saying don't restrict the warp angle. If I wanted to, I could restrict it so that they all ran in the same direction. If I had a grain or a pattern to my fabric, I could actually say I want a warp angle um, restriction on there. And it would not allow them to go past, let's say, 15 degrees or whatever degrees I set, even zero. And here's my ops linear uh, resolution and optimization. I could crank this up and really get it optimized. Let's leave it where it's at now. Let's run the nesting it's thinking about it and we are nesting 10 panels into 60 inches of fabric and here in real time uh, about 15 seconds and I can tell you by putting a linear resolution or linear dimension on this that it looks like we're gonna need about 81 82 inches of fabric to uh, to cut all these panels out so the last step is to take these panels 
and I will just select them all and hold my shift key down and select that one. Here's where I can go over to our output panels tool and I can output the cut layer, the pen layer, anything that's chalked on or magenta. I can export them as a DXF for this and for us. I'm just going to click, say, leave them on the drawing. I'm going to click output. It runs through here. I'll hit the little objects. And here we have the DXF file that would be output to your cutting table. Everything that's red would be cut. Everything that's blue would be pinned on. The magenta would either be a chalk mark or just you could ignore that in your table software. But that's a an upholstery job with M panel. Um, again, a chair that had been scanned with either a, like a laser or with a uh, pro liner device. And then we actually can input the fabric into M panel production and output those panels uh, in just about 10 minutes. You can contact us, support at mpanel.com. Thank you.